this is Minion. Uh, he has cow thorax, and he's had it for nine months. He's been fighting it for that long, and it's been seven months since his last tap. Uh, I wanted to make this video uh, for anyone else who might have an animal that's been diagnosed with uh, cow thorax, um, because I've I've spent countless hours researching um, the best ways to go about things, the best supplements and medicines. So this is kind of a good first resource when you find out the awful news that your animal has cow thorax. Um, you need to just remember to stay positive that it's not the end of the world. This is living proof that you can fight cow thorax. Keep watching and I'm going to go over kind of every everything that I do for Minion here uh, to make him stay happy, healthy, and breathing okay. So maybe you've already had that first vet visit, um, but I wanted to go over that a little bit. Uh, so the first vet visit you generally starts with kind of the scary first incident um, for me and Minion. It was a, a warm day and he started laying on his side and um, I just thought he was kind of hot but then his breathing was kind of really fast and really labored and so we, we started to see something was definitely wrong. Um, we rushed him to the, to the vet and they took an x-ray, saw that the fluid um, was pretty much everywhere in his chest cavity and we did the emergency chest tap and he survived and so that's that might be something that you had to go through as well either a worst case or not quite as bad case but in any case that's kind of how the first vet visit goes and then at least at the end of our vet visit <coughs> the vet um, kind of explained in the best way he could our options or what he thought was our options which was um, just take him home and make him comfortable and then hope it doesn't happen again and if it does take him back uh, tap him again or he basically said if we don't want to keep doing this run around it might get worse and worse to just put him down now which no way that is not a good option um, because you can fight it. So, um, but before we knew that, we just said, obviously, let's just tap it and hope for the best. But then as soon as we got home, we started researching everything. Um, and I'm going to go over kind of what we found. Um, there's even kind of the things that we found are based on actual scientific research. There's some clinical research studies uh, on there for some of the medication um, for the supplement actually. The next thing I want to talk about is just keeping an eye on your animal um, after the diagnosis. The most important thing is uh, just just making sure it, it looks like your animal is breathing okay. Obviously the best kind of breathing is just mellow, slow, nice, in and out, but that's not always going to be the case even even for a normal cat or a dog. Uh, so what you have to do is just be just really keep an eye on your animal. I recommend keeping kind of a running list of your animal's breathing rate um, and to to do this just when your animal's resting on the ground or on their bed uh, get it get your stopwatch going on your phone you can either set it to one minute or watch for one minute, but start the timer and start counting the breaths uh, from your animal. At least for my cat, we were able to establish the kind of green, yellow, and red kind of danger zones of breathing. Uh, green, really good, was anywhere from 22 to even 30 we considered still not awful and then we would start to get worried from 30 breaths a minute to 40 45 ish and then from 45 ish up it was basically 
a matter of, okay, if this doesn't go down soon, we're taking him back into the vet. And I recommend you do your own research on your own animal to kind of see what their standard breathing rates should be, but at least that's what we use for Minion or Cat. I wanted to mention Kyle Thorax is uh, greatly agitated by heat, so definitely watch out if you're in a warmer area or if it's summertime and it's just really hot. You should try to keep your animal cooler and if possible in air conditioned if it's really hot because uh, at least in Minion's case it's you can visibly see the difference of him just relaxing in normal weather versus trying to breathe right in hot weather. The next thing that it, it took us a while to get to this point but to, playing with Playing with our cat was kind of a actually a good test because for one Minion you knew Minion was feeling well if he would play and then after not a long play after about a minute or two then you would stop and check his breathing and if the breathing was just seemed sort of regular after play and then slowly back down to normal that is good if it if his breathing seems really labored and fast and the other thing is watch out for nostril flares uh, that that is uh, not a great sign and you should definitely keep watching your animal and if that doesn't stop then you should go to the vet and the ultimate last worst red flag is mouth breathing um, that's actually what happened to Minion the first time he had his mouth open and he was breathing and, and that that was really bad and really scary and you should not let it get there so you gotta watch out for the other signs the big labored nostril breathing the hard fast chest uh, bumping so anyway and like I said is once once your animal feels stable enough that they can play a little bit playing is kind of a good measure of how your animal is currently doing although the standard should be the resting breath rate uh, which for minion we would just take that number at least four times a day and always keep an eye on him uh, just to make sure that he was breathing right one other thing is if your animal has a spot that they go when they're not feeling well definitely watch out for that because two of the four times we had to rush Minion to the vet, it was, um, he went and tried to hide in his little secret spot in the basement, which meant he's not feeling well and he doesn't want to spend time with anyone. So keep an eye out for the secret not feeling well spot. Okay, and I wanted to talk a little bit more about Minion's personal experience. He was tapped four times um, total so far and I'll kind of go over that a little bit here so we rushed him to the vet that first time and then um, on five days later we had to rush him again uh, which was kind of expected um, so don't fret if that happens to you the next time wasn't a rush in it was a it's time to take him in kind of thing which actually took uh, two to three weeks for the third tap we noticed he started to have that labored breathing and didn't seem as comfortable uh, I think he was getting breath rates 40 up while resting which definitely means that it means it's time to go in um, after that it was uh, about a whole month before we had to take him in again um, it's sort of the same thing there we just noticed it's about time and that last one was seven months ago. We've had a few times in the past seven months where we've had to monitor him a lot more and keep an eye on how he's doing because of sort of telltale signs. But then they uh, luckily sort of passed. They went back to a normal breathing rate or just went back to the way it should be. So luckily, we haven't had a tap since then, so that is good, and that is the goal here, uh, to sort of wean off of those taps. 
So don't be discouraged when you when and if you have to take your animal in for multiple taps or if it doesn't seem like they're getting better at first don't give up yet because these animals are strong and they can fight it. Um, another note is for Minion we actually had three different vets at the emergency hospital that did the taps on him which at first we were a little weary about but then we realized that might actually have been a good thing because each vet was kind of able to get a different pocket of his chest cavity or um, kind of have a different idea on how he should um, how we should go about things to to pass this uh, so that's just a note don't be scared if you have to use a different doctor because they might have a good different point of view than your normal doctor The next thing I wanted to talk about is diet and supplements. This, in my opinion, was the largest factor in making Minion fight this thing so well. So, um, the first thing I wanted to quickly go over is uh, this disease is based on a duct that breaks open and and the fluid spills into the chest cavity and the fluid is basically kind of a, uh, a an artery of fat that kind of delivers fat where needed so the idea is to put your animal on a low fat diet while still getting enough uh, protein and other things uh, that they might need a very important calculation is uh, calculating the fat percentage based on dry matter only. And to do this, uh, you basically have to standardize uh, the moisture across all foods. Um, and to do that, uh, what you do, for example, this is a dry food that I'm going to be using here. I see that the moisture is 10% and the fat is 9%. So the first thing you want to do is go 100 for 100% 100 minus 10% because this has 10% moisture. You get 90. Then so you take the fat actual fat number 9% divided by 100 minus 10 90 and you get 0 0.1. 0 0.1 as a fraction, I mean as a percentage is 10%. So this dry food is Actually, 10% has 10% fat, which is really pretty good. Um, and this, if if it's your cat that has calthorax, I would recommend Blue Buffalo uh, Weight Control. This cat food has uh, many uh, good ingredients and not so many fillers. The first, uh, the first five ingredients are the most important things when looking at food. And here we have deboned chicken chicken meal, brown rice, barley, and fish meal. Um, brown rice and barley aren't the greatest, but the top five ingredients, three of them are actual meats, and that's actually pretty good. Um, so I recommend this. The next thing I'm going to go over is wet food. Uh, obviously, again, Minion is a cat, so this is cat food. But uh, if, you, if you have a cat, I recommend Waruva or Tiki Cat. <clears throat> are both uh, super good um, wet foods that have really good ingredients but also have a very low fat dry matter percentage and just to do another example we'll of a dry matter percentage we'll look here so we have 1.4 percent fat and 85 percent moisture so remember we go 100 minus 85 moisture from this 15 so that's the number on the bottom and we have 1.4 1.4 divided by 15 shows 0 0.093 which means this is 9.3 percent fat which is really good and always be sure to do that dry matter calculation because uh, sometimes brands shift like Tiki Cat um, actually recently got more fatty and I don't recommend some of the newer ones uh, but anyway, just make sure to do that calculation. 
these are nine what was it nine point three the dry food is ten percent so we've actually been doing good at being ten percent or below and I recommend that because it's worked for minions so well okay now I want to go over in my opinion the number one supplement you should get your hands on uh, for your animal with cow thorax and that is rutin um, this I don't know everything about it, but it's a plant-based supplement, I believe, that has basically agents in it that help um, absorb that fat that runs along the duct that breaks and uh, spills into the chest cavity. So what it does is basically remove a good amount of that fluid. It's It's just... The best, the best supplement, and I truly believe this had a lot to do with uh, how well Minion has been doing. I recommend going to Amazon, searching bulk supplements, uh, and getting their rutin. It's not only the cheapest I've found, but it's the most pure. There's no filler. There's very little taste to it, which is a very big thing for animals. Um, the first few rutins I got had a kind of a nasty, salty taste to them. And uh, Minion is smart enough to know that that does not taste good, and he did not in, uh, take it as well as this stuff. So this is what you get, and I'll show you how to use it in just a second. One thing about Rutin is it you should kind of vary the amount you're giving your animal uh, based on their size and um, how, how they're doing with their condition. Um, currently, we're giving Minion about, I'd say probably 1,000 to 1,500 milligrams, um, which we've been about standard there for a while now. Um, we were able to decrease that a little bit to maybe 750 a day, uh, but then sort of recently we, we noticed a little bit more trouble breathing and we upped it, and we've actually seen some good results. So it kind of varies depending on how your animal's doing. But when your animal's first diagnosed with calthorax, I recommend even up to 2,000 uh, milligrams a day, which if you're using this, would be uh, a little less than a teaspoon of this. Okay, the next thing I wanna mention is Bonito Flakes. Make sure you get some Bonito Flakes uh, made for animals to help with uh, making whatever food dish, dish you're mixing in the rutin um, or any other supplements with to make it more yummy. Uh, Minion is not that picky, but sometimes he won't eat unless I mix a little bit of the Bonito in. So, it's a very good thing. It's also on Amazon. Uh, Katmandu is one brand, and I just bought a different brand. I don't remember, but as long as it's Bonito Flakes for animals, uh, you should be good. The next thing I want to go over is the medications that Minion is on for his calthorax. And I recommend that any animal with calthorax take these medications. Um, the interesting thing is that Minion's calthorax is idiopathic, and I believe most cases are idiopathic, which means they don't know why it happened. Why it, there's no trauma or anything, they're just not sure why. They got Kyle Thorax. So anyway, this is kind of a shotgun approach, but I recommend it. Um, the first thing we give Minion is uh, furosemide, which is, I believe, a diuretic. It makes them pee a lot. It takes the fluid out of their body and makes them pee. One of the doctors recommended this um, because it, it also might help with just removing some of those fluids that can build up in the chest. Um, so, I recommend that. They're pretty cheap. You can get them on... You do need a prescription, but uh, you can get them cheaper probably online. So, make your vet price match or get them online. Okay, the next thing I want to go over uh, that your animal should take if they have chylothorax is enalapril. And this um, this is a more interesting medicine uh, because it's, it's meant to treat heart disease, uh, as well as high blood pressure, um, but also another thing it does is helps prevent fluid buildup in the lungs. It says it 
uh, right here on one of these online um, pet med places. So Enelopril is another good one. Uh, the main thing about Enelopril and Ferrosamide is that it doesn't hurt them. And that's what I mean by shotgun approach is if it's working, just keep it up. It's not going to hurt them if it's not doing anything. We're trying to do whatever we can here to make sure our animal's okay. So that those are the two medications I give Minion daily. Um, and just another tip. We use pill pockets for cats, uh, and they work really well. Like I said, Minion is not that picky, so I don't know if it'll work with your cat or dog, but I highly recommend pill pockets because uh, trying to throw it in their throat or using a liquid or any other method just is kind of intrusive and didn't work for Minion. So I recommend that uh, for your animal as well. Okay, and I'm going to bring you over to the kitchen, and you can watch me make uh, a rutin dish that I give Minion uh, that he actually loves. I wanted to mention another supplement that I give Minion is this, VetraScience New Cat, uh, just a multivitamin uh, that has really seemed to pep him up completely which is pretty cool. Uh, the other thing I recently started giving him, sort of unrelated, but this stuff is great uh, if your animal's older and maybe starting to get some signs of cataracts. I support this is the best stuff. I just mix some in with his food as well. Okay, next I'm going to just go over how I uh, make Minions wet and dry food uh, using the Rutin from bulk supplements, as well as uh, the other, I give them eye support as well. What I do is I start with a mixing bowl, and I've got my blue buffalo weight control here. I put 10 scoops in. Okay, 10 scoops. I get a little mixing jar here. I actually use a shot glass works great. <clears throat> and the amount that I'm using currently of rutin is uh, so this is a half teaspoon which says here it's 1376 milligrams and what I do is give one of these for every uh, two scoops I give which is a uh, quarter cup so I give one one for every two of these. So one for every half cup. Oopsie. So I'm gonna put five flat scoops in our mixing thing here. five scoops. The next thing I do is, like I mentioned earlier, to make it yummier, we're going to add Bonito Flakes right into it. This uh, you can just sort of wing depending on how much your animal needs. Uh, and the other thing I forgot is I uh, do use a little bit of this eye support. This doesn't taste great and Minion doesn't love it, so I just do uh, less than a scoop of this, but obviously this is not relevant to cow thorax. Okay, next I kind of mix that in a little and I fill it with water just barely higher than where it goes, so it's kind of creates a kind of thick liquid. Okay, about that much. And then I mix it together. Make sure to get all the chunks out. Okay. You want you want just to you want it to kind of look like that. 
Okay, so we've got a Rutin, our Bonito, optional eye support, and next, uh, it kind of it sometimes helps to have two people, but if not, it's just sort of a pour and stir kind of thing here. Try to get all the stuff from the outside, get everything nice and mixed together so it's even. All right, and the last step I do for this is pour it into a bag so that I can just kind of mix it further and um, and keep it. Okay, and a note with this, I actually refrigerate this, um, and I, I try not to make too much. This is probably the most I've ever made at one time, just so, because I was making something for this video. But obviously, with the moisture, there's some room for more bacteria to grow, so try to make small amounts at a time, and that's why I refrigerate it, um, so that there's less, less likely a bacteria or, or anything will happen. So anyway, that's how you make uh, the dry food. And if your animal still doesn't like it, you can sprinkle more Bonito on top of it. And uh, my cat just loves it. So that's how you mix, that's the easiest way to mix rutin into their dry food. Okay, next up is wet food. And uh, I don't always give Minion wet food. Um, <clears throat> but I have been recently because it's a good way to add more rutin into uh, the diet. Uh, and also he loves it so much it's hard not to give it to him. So anyway, here's what I do for wet food. As I mentioned earlier, the um, Waruva, if you have a cat, Waruva and Tiki Cat are the best. And I don't give too much every time either. But anyway, just maybe that much, maybe a little more. Okay, and now we get our mixer again, and for this I just do one scoop, which is uh, 1300 milligrams, and that is actually a good amount to mix into that. Um, this one doesn't need as much Bonito Flakes because it's yummy as is, but we'll do a little bit. And Minion actually likes his wet food soupy. Okay, and this is optional, but I microwave it for about 20 seconds to uh, kind of make it more appealing and, and smelly for the cat. And the last thing I want to go over is uh, using pill pockets. I'm using the chicken flavored cat pill pockets today and they look like like this. They have little holes in them and it's as simple as um, taking a half of one of the enalaprils if you can see that and just shoving it in there making a pocket out of it and it looks like a treat but it's actually a pill and the same thing goes with the furosemide we split it in half and put one in here and that's it so um, just a note on these medicines that I didn't mention either uh, earlier. Minion's getting a 2.5 milligram enalapril, uh, which is which is this size. 
uh, and and it's he's getting only one half a day, and the furosemide he's getting a 12.5 milligram, which looks about this size, and he takes a whole one a day, but a half uh, a half at two different times a day. So that's that. And that's all I have for you today. Um, just remember that you can fight this. Uh, Minion is living proof of that. There's many other um, people online going through the same thing. Uh, there's a Facebook group. There's a few good, few good forums you should find. Um, everything that I've shared with you is just my experience. Um, obviously things can vary and you should do your own research at least in terms of the amount of root in the medications things like that but I wanted this video to serve as just kind of a, a starting point to let you know that uh, there's still hope and um, you can do your best to get through this and uh, hopefully Hopefully things will go well like they have been with Minion, and hopefully all of our cats and dogs and other animals can keep just uh, fighting this awful disease and staying happy and healthy and fluffy and furry. So uh, let me know if you have any questions uh, at the bottom of this video. I'll do my best to answer them. Uh, but yeah, thanks for watching, and uh, I hope this was helpful for you and your animal. Thanks. Thank you.